Um, so yeah, I'm not condemning it. It just feels like like it just it's such a negligible change. Obsidious, the Titan. Ironically, we didn't get to the Obsidian we needed off of him. It's in his goddamn name. Black Heart of the Void. Can't help but think of, you know, Heart of Darkness. I played a few games with references to that uh, book. There was, you know, uh, Bow for Azeroth, and then there was uh, Spec Ops the Line. Oh, this place is awfully gribbly. Expecting to just randomly hear, you know, heavy metal music start blaring. Do need to get back to playing Doom. Ah, I was on the second of three fours. I guess I skim reading did not work out for me. Catalus the usurper. I'm a Catalus. You should have stuck to your poetry. For those who don't get that reference, Catalus was a Roman poet. Parent, well, that fucker of life was disturbing. I thought there's a huge like mound beast here. Um, Catullus, anyway, was a Roman poet. Um, he f practiced a more modern style of poetry. Back in the day, it was all like epic battles, rah, 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 rah. you know, that kind of thing. Um, like the Aeneid, the Iliad, the Odyssey. Well, I think one of the two are the same thing, or, can, or at least like uh, connected. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, he just did like, you know, yo, this, I got ting, I, I got a thing for this chick, you know, uh, you know, my brother died, I'm mourning, you know, he, he did, you know, very much more personal and personal topics uh, than, you know, grand wars and whatnot. So, it... Apparently, he was considered to be the like, worst poet in Rome. I've heard actually some conflicting information about the whole thing. Uh, one said there's a whole movement uh, surrounding it, yet the teachings while we weren't in school was saying that made it sound like it was... Well, they didn't mention the movement at all. Certainly, uh, well, one of the teachers who taught classics was a bit questionable, just insofar as... Well, she was also our English teacher. And she taught that villain protagonists could not be a thing. If the character was the main character of a story, was the protagonist, they had to be a good guy. And she was in the middle of teaching us Macbeth, who was a villain protagonist. Protagonist just means main character. That's all it means. It doesn't mean good guy. That's all it means. And she's the English teacher. And she also went on to claim the Greeks worship theatre. Rather than theatre being a way of expressing faith. It's like, say if you go to your local church. There's a one down the street from me. Two, actually. Uh, say uh, you, you go to church and you you, do, you say mass. You, or, you know, whatever. You know, go, you go to your local religious thing. Oh, Christ, that's, well, that's gribbly. But anyway... You aren't use going to Mass to practice and, you know, celebrate your faith. No, 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 no. Your faith is the Mass. You know, it's reduce. It's taking a way of expressing your faith and turning it into your faith. Even if that's not what she meant, as a teacher of English, you think she would have the capability of expressing that. So, yeah, basically... I'm skeptical of whatever she taught us, but there was another teacher, and he did seem markedly more competent. Though I actually did surprise him at one stage. Um, basically, I was like, look, and end up looking stuff up online. We were learning about the triumvirate, and then the second triumvirate. The first triumvirate was Julius Caesar, General Pompey, no connection to the city, apparently at all. What's even named it after him? He came first. Uh, so yeah, there's Julius Caesar, Pompey, and Crassus. Crassus was the richest man in Rome. 
Julius Caesar obviously was a very accomplished general, as was Pompey. Pompey had never been defeated, um, though he had gotten lucky on many occasion. There was a rogue general over in Spain, for example, who was taken out by a subordinate who was much easier for Pompey to deal with. The, uh, the gent rogue general was much more of a threat. The rogue subordinate wasn't. Uh, Mitridates gave, kept giving Pompey the slip. Someone else, uh, he took over for someone else, which pissed them off. But uh, Mitridates would rise an army. The army would be struck down. Mitridates would disappear. The, then he would be somewhere else and he would have risen an army. He would be killed and then he would disappear. He would have risen an army. And you can get my point. And all the while, like, Pompey's like rushing after him, you know, utterly ragged. After having to fight his way through, like, Amazons. I'm not kidding, that's what they claim they fought. You know, mythical warrior women. Um, you know, no idea if they had lassos of truth. It's unknown if they're actually true, or... I can't remember the actual historical phrasing for it, but my recollection of it is just simply horny soldier stories. But yeah, they. I think it can probably be accepted that they had to fight through other war bands and whatnot in the region in the way to get into Mitridantes. Whether or not they're Amazons is up for debate. But, um, yeah, anyway, uh, eventually Mitridantes ended up committing suicide. One of his sons was dead, while the other one ended up siding with Rome. And with Mitri with that, when that happened, Mitridantes uh, killed himself somehow. His, he, uh, <laughs> Pompey, being genre savvy and having seen all, uh, all the Rambo movies, turned up to confirm that Mitridantes was dead. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, they, that was the original triumvirate. These were three very successful, powerful men in Rome who decided to use their power to uh, sidestep the actual ruling party of Rome the Senate and the consuls, because, like, Pompey wanted to land for his men. The Senate kept vetoing it. The v Senate were idiots. They wouldn't pay for their own troops, leading the troops to be more loyal to the generals who paid them out of their own fucking pocket. The Senate, I don't think, even funded, like, training or equipment. As some other general had to bring in those reforms. Originally, if you wanted to be cavalry, you had to bring your own fucking horse. You to, if you wanted armor, you had to bring it yourself. For the rich, they had only two fields of professions, politics and the army. Everything else was either for the poor or for slaves. Like, teachers were all Greek slaves. But anyway, um, so yeah, they used, the, uh, Julius Caesar used his sway, his, his abilities, to get Pompey land for his men. While Julius Caesar wanted to keep fighting in Gaul. So, he got his way. Uh, according to Plutarch, Julius Caesar was just prepping for his eventual march on Rome. But Plutarch quite clearly hates Julius Caesar. And as such, you know, he isn't quite a good source on Julius Caesar. While he does sometimes, like, begrudgingly accept he's done good, he does quite, he does hold the man in quite high contempt. Uh, I remember hearing another criticism of him was that he gets too caught up in moralizing on certain historical events and not enough on actually stating historical events. He ends up missing stuff because of it. Uh, but regrettably, he is actually our only source on a lot of stuff. As far as I know, anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, the second triumvirate, what I was getting at, was Caesar Jr., uh, Caesar saw one of his progeny once. He only saw the kid once, but proclaimed that kid to be his, his successor. Um, also, anything I say, do do double check. Regrettably, yeah, I realized this a while back, but basically, after learning about the assassination of Julius Caesar, we covered. Also, I'm noticing only two debuffs here, rather than three in the other place. Maybe I had three in the other place because I already ran it once. Or because it had scaled up a bit further, maybe? I have, I have no idea. Maybe that's how they were trying to scale it up without leveling the minions. Mm. But anyway, um, basically I'd confused the assassination with Julius Caesar, the historical one, with the Shakespearean one. We learned one right after the other, and my mind blended the two together. So, meh. 
I can't, I'm still not entirely sure what's, what was accurate. I think M Mark Antony was built like a tank. I think that was accurate, and they had to make a deliberate effort to keep him away, because he could apparently turn the tide against, like, 13 assailants with knives, just because he's, like, meaty fists, which is pretty awesome. I'm just, like, imagining him grabbing blades and, like, bending them, not even getting cut by them. Um, but, yeah, anyway, um, anyway, Mark Antony also thought he would be Julius Caesar's successor, but, no, Caesar saw some spark in one of his kids and named him successor. So the kid comes to Rome, and he ends up becoming friends with, um, could, uh, not Catullus. Oh, the greatest orator in Rome. I'm looking this up. Greatest Roman, that would help if I could spell, Roman orator. Cicero. Cicero. He ended up becoming friends with Cicero. Um, but yeah, Cicero is known as the greatest Roman orator. So anyway, he becomes buddies with him. Uh, Cicero helps him, but all the while being paranoid and quite angry. Well, maybe not paranoid, but he hates Mark Antony with uh, frothing vengeance. Um, basically, he wrote many of Philippics. Philippics is uh, actually a Greek phrase meaning against Philip. I feel quite attacked right now. For those who don't know, my name is Philip. But anyway, um, uh, that was Cicero trying to show off, look how educated I am. Uh, Cicero was quite a vain man. At one stage, he went to govern a place, and he's like, oh, I'm sure all my friends will be like, oh, we heard how great a job you did. He ends up running into one of his friends on the way back. And the friend was like, where, where have you been? We've been missing you. He was fuming. But anyway, yeah, he was, like, the greatest orator in Rome. But, yeah, he thought Mark Antony was a threat to the Republic. So all while he's helping out Caesar Jr., I can't remember the kid's name, uh, Plutarch called him the young Caesar, and I called him Caesar Jr. as a joke on that, and now I can't remember the guy's actual name. But he's the first emperor. Julius Caesar never became emperor. That's something important. I've seen some say otherwise, but he never did. He was cut down before he even had the chance. I remember Horrible Histories was claiming one of the reasons people hated him was because he had red shoes. A sign of monarchy. Uh, there, mo everything is about symbols. You wear a bigger hat, you're clearly more important. Everything is about symbols, plumage. You know? So I I'm not, wouldn't be too surprised if that's accurate. It was in you know, one of the audio dramas on CD. They were saying that. They didn't have it in the Horrible History books, but it was on the audio drama. I remember that. I listened to that as a kid. And my nans. But anyway, anyway. I didn't get rid of that helmet, did I? No, I didn't. So anyway, um, he... But yeah, anyway, he uh, Cicero saw Mark Antony as the greatest threat to the Roman Republic. So he kept writing Philpixes and screeds against him. Philpix also, it, more, it now means more than just against Philip, it means he could tirade. So anyway, uh, Pompey was the like, greatest orator in Rome, and he was also actually a defensive lawyer. Only once did he prosecute. And in Roman law, you get three days for your trial. And even if those days fall on a holiday, that's your trial. If they can't prove you guilty by then, well, oh well. Um, the guy manages to have his trial fall on two holidays, and he figured it wouldn't, they wouldn't have enough time to on the third day. But Cicero was good enough to conv convict him you know, prove his guilt. Basically, the guy took over governorship after Cicero of that place, and the people came to him because he was embezzling the place, and Cicero was able to prove him and strike him down in that one-day trial. He, despite the guy's uh, attempted manipulation of the Roman legal system. But anyway, um... Yeah, anyway... So yeah, ironically, Cicero ended up helping the future first emperor. But Mark Antony... Caesar Jr. and Lepidus end up forming the second triumvirate, with Lepidus taking the role of Crassus. That was an important detail. Uh, the detail that started all this story off, just, yeah, I end up giving too much backstory, was Lepidus. His father was actually a rogue general that 
Pompey put down. Normally, when someone goes rogue, their whole families get snicked, you know? They don't exactly walk out of it alive. So the fact that Lepidus was, remain, was you know, untouched and important enough to be part of the second triumvirate. Unlike the first, these weren't prestigious people. Uh, certainly, I'm sure Mark Antony had some prestige to him, and maybe the kid as well, but, you know, Crassus was the richest man in Rome, while well, the other two were veteran generals, and I don't know what Pompey, uh, what, what Mark Antony even did. I know he was built like a boxer, but that was it. And the other guy had was new to Rome. You know, he was Caesar's successor. He wasn't... I don't think he'd done anything in his own right by then. He'd probably done some bits, but not important enough to be stated during the course. So it seemed to be like a a shadow of what it used to be. But still, apparently Lepidus was taking Crassus's place in the whole thing. Uh, though maybe it was more that he, the other two were the driving forces and he was just sitting back. You know? Because... Uh, Cr uh, Crassus didn't really seem to want much out of the second triumvirate. It was always about Julius Caesar's and Pompey's wants. He, I'm sure he got some stuff, but they ne we never learned that in, on, in classics. So, yeah, that's basically uh, when I discovered that Lepidus actually had a father, I found it on Wikipedia. That stumped my um, classics teacher. my One of my two, my Roman classics teacher. It stumped him. But yeah, apparently, uh, moving way back, um, Put, uh, Pom uh, Catullus was apparently known as the worst poet in Rome, and that was because he had a more personal style than the epic battles and the, you know, the general epics that were wrote. You can find plenty of them online. Um, there is one like uh, that he wrote to, dedicated to his brother. His brother had passed away, and this is how he grieved. He dedicated a poem to it, and it's rather sweet. I know when I read it before, I I know I missed it up a bit. It's a sweet little thing. He um, also wrote a few other ones. Um, I remember seeing one translated, and it was just nothing but swears. But I'm not sure on that translation. There was another one... Um, he really hated this one guy. I can't. I can never find the poem again. I'm, I'm now. I'm wondering if it was even real, but the poem was. You know, it's just like this guy is. is basically, he's arguing that this guy's utterly disgusting, and that any woman who lied with him should be, you know, viewed in the same light. Um. But yeah. Um. In, in some of his poems, he mentioned a lesbian. Basically, the, the name Lesbia has the same phonetic quality as the woman's actual name. I do believe we actually know the woman's true name, but she was some married woman who's infamous for, well, everyone knew she slept around on her husband. And uh, Catullus had a thing for her, though she must not interested in him. He wrote a fair few poems about her, positively and negatively. Um, so, yeah. I know a few of his poems got translated by Lord Byron, I do believe. Um, he was an interesting character. While he was apparently into young boys, he um, had some nicer qualities. Um, at least that's what Wikipedia was saying. Again, it's Wikipedia, but I haven't really had the time to go buy a, you know, the definitive Lord Byron book, you know, uh, autobiography. Uh, that's at least what Wikipedia is alleging, anyway. But um, apparently, he brought his bear to school once. He wa he went to Trinity College. He was here in Ireland, and uh, he wasn't allowed. Br uh, there is a Trin. He was here in Ireland, right? I think there's another Trinity elsewhere. Here, give me a second. Lord B Y R O N. He was born in the UK, died in Greece, and T R I N. ITY? Trinity College, Cambridge. I only know of the Irish version. Ah, okay. But yeah, anyway, he was over in Cambridge. And, um, and I think there's one in America, but anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, yeah, he was over there 
And he was told, you're not allowed to bring your dog with you to school. And he was like, fine. Brought his pet bear instead. Apparently also personally um, cared for one of his dogs. It had contracted rabies and he like waited on it hand and foot. He wasn't too scared of even be being bit by it. Despite its, you know, maladies. Um... I remember reading, there's some stories online about like, letters some of his friends had wrote and uh, like he had a house just full of animals and the way the animals were pottering about one of the friends was like wondering like, you know, what pe you know, what person was that in, you know, in, in another life or, you know, tran person transformed kind of thing. Uh, he, uh, there was another story, I haven't been able to find any proof of this beyond the story, but it was just that basically they had a falling out with a friend. So that friend sent another friend, uh, maybe the guy from the animal letter I mentioned previously, to go check up on Byron. The friend eventually found Byron in a French brothel, malnourished and dehydrated. When he t sends back a letter to the friend that had sent them, the friend responds, keep in mind, Byron isn't involved in any of these letters, it's just between the other two guys. The, gu uh, the initial friend just says, you should have left him there. And it's just... <laughs> Apparently they were good friends, but they're just... It's just, it's funny. Uh, again, I haven't been able to prove that, but it's just a funny story. Just... Just found him in a brothel, just... You know, bonking himself to his death. It's funny. He ends up dying, uh, he actually gets involved in a military conflict over in Italy. Um, apparently, according to Wikipedia, he didn't really achieve any military goals and, you know, achievements. But he did do some good humanitarian work. Uh, he apparently funded care for Muslim and Christian victims of the war alike. And so much, and he was so much liked over in Italy, there's actually a statue there dedicated to him. He's quite well respected. Um, so, yeah. He seems pretty cool. The other point, uh, you know, excluding the other point, I, what's the right phrasing? Other point notwithstanding. Yeah, he seems cool, except for that, if it's indeed true. I, again, I only know about Wikipedia. Um, you know, I've only read that Wikipedia entry, like, maybe twice, three times. I'm surprised I remember as much as I do. When I get interested in something, as I'm sure is true for all of us, you know, you, you remember more than you expect you would. <sighs> if I was this good when I was actually came to fucking schoolwork, eh? I was, I was never good with it. Could never study, never on. Well, anyway, let us continue. I've been sitting here gas bagging for like practically an entire episode. If I remember, I'll try and make this a extra long one, make make it forty minutes. Though to be fair, I probably should be doing that to begin with. But anyway, um, so yes, uh, yeah, basically go moving ages back. Um, I can't remember quite where I started now. I was making the point about you know stumping the one teacher. Like, the one teacher who's also the English teacher not knowing about villain protagonists, all teaching us a book about a villain protagonist. Then something the other guy who was markedly more competent, or at least, you know, put that forward, if you get me. Um, I'm being harsh here, but it sticks in my craw because I brought up villain protagonist to the teacher. And it's like, could you say that again? I said it again, and she, could you say that again? And I was like, eh, never mind. Then I brought it up to her next day in class, and she's like, oh no, that's, that can't be a thing. And I felt like an utter idiot for years, only to realize, she was fucking wrong! I, I, it ate, ate me up, because I hate making mistakes, and she was the one who fucked up. That's why I'm so harsh about it. Uh, while it's not her fault that I felt like an idiot, that's a long list of other people's fault. I mean, my, my, my name being on that, certainly. Um, I still bear her a grudge. Um, so yeah, I remember making those points, but I can't remember, I feel there's a point before that. But I can't remember it, it's been too long. I was forgetting what I was saying sometimes when I was talking, I was barely like remembering enough to keep the tread going. But, uh, yeah, that happened. Sup, demons? Thank you for waiting for my classic lesson. But yeah, and I say, be sure to double check. Like I said, I, I was wrong before about the whole um, Julius Caesar thing and his death and confusing it with um, uh, 
confusing it with um, the Shakespearean version. Like I said, we learned like one like right after the other, so it was. Let's grab them with some. Uh, like, yeah, we learned one, like, right after... Ooh, this might be another s store point. Potential store point. But, I mean, uh, yeah, we learned one, like, right after the other. So, it was, um... Ah, okay, this... Just connected with this. Um, yeah, we learned one, like, right after the other. So, it's just blurred together in my mind. And I... I you know, I didn't have notes on it, so I, actually, I may, I probably do have notes, but they're just buried somewhere, so it's not like I could refer to it and whatnot, I just went off my, my recollection of it, which was clearly flawed. But yeah, basically, double check if you're interested, you know, if you're not interested, you know, it's still probably not a good idea to quote me on it, but you probably will be inclined to. If you are interested, it's probably a good idea to double check whatever I say, if only to confirm that I'm right, you know? Because uh, there's a fair chance I'm not. And while I wouldn't intentionally mislead you, I could be wrong about something without even realizing. Yeah, basically, I, I wouldn't intentionally mislead you, but I could just be misremembering details. And, um... Well, I would hate to make someone wrong and embarrass them like that. Okay, for a moment there, I thought it said plunging neckline of the, uh, neckline of the void on one of the bits of that, that gear. Um, uh, I completely misread it. But yeah, just double check whatever I say. Not because I would mislead you, but because I could be wrong. I am mortal and all that. As much as I want, you know fully up, you know, fully cyborg brain and all that. I'm not quite there yet. Can't just upload the information into me. Not yet, anyway. Would like to stick around long enough for that to be the thing. Big fan of transhumanism. For those who don't get that, what that phrase means, basically transhumanism is, uh, like, cybernetics, uh, you know, really advanced prosthetic limbs and whatnot, as well as uh, biological transhumanism, which is, um, like, gene modding and whatnot. It's uh, trying to become more than hu hu just an ordinary human via either mechanical or biological means. Um, uh, certainly, uh, none we have right now, but we will get there eventually. It's just, it's all a matter of time, funding, and, well, that we don't go through some, you know, Warhammer 40k, you know, tech regression. I suppose they have it there, too, but it's none of the stuff you'd want, you know? Ooh, this looks very much final area. That's locked. Alright, never mind. For, fuck that place. Hopefully there wasn't a shrine over there. Sharzul, Harbringer of Chaos. That skill's not ready. I hate those crystals. Let's 
stay away from the firestorm. I do got 80% fire resist. And that is... That will serve me well. I also have these boots. These boots were made for protection and that's just what they'll do. Now I'm just imagining someone just trying to have sex with the boot on the top... On top of their dick. But it's made for protection! Uh, it's just because there's a burning sensation does not mean it's elemental. Sarzul extinguished. Doing remains, obsidian welt, transcendence chest, obsidian shard, obsidian welt. Buster. The guillotine. Legendary two-handed axe. Ooh, baby! <laughs> okay. 372 bleeding damage over 3 seconds. 17% crit damage. 152% uh, bleeding damage with 101% increased duration. 9% of attack damage converted to health. 48 cunning. Plus 1 to all soldier skills, shaman skills, necromancer skills. Granted skills, revel in death. 20% chance on enemy death. Revel in the carnage you've caused, feasting on spilled blood. 1 second skill recharge, 6 second duration. Plus 100% bleeding damage with 50% increased duration. 25% chance of 60% of attack damage converted to health. That's pretty nice. It is a large damage drop, but it will give me one to all skills that I have. Soldier, Shaman, and Necromancer. Obviously, Soldier is irrelevant, but I would actually have a weapon that favors Shaman and Necromancer. I would have 10 in this, 15 here, 2 here, 4 here, five, 7 here, 15 here. You know, Oh damn, I have 12, 3, 13, you know? It's, oh, it'll be beautiful. Hulking Leg Guards. Uh, Heart of Wrath, it's I don't know one I have, but it's, it has less armor. But it gives 55% physical damage, 40% internal trauma damage, 28 physique, 4% physical uh, resistance, and 2 to Heart of Wrath. And it also has Earthquake. I think I probably should stick with what I have. Glyph of the Winter Fox. It's part of the metals and it's an epic augment. A formidable symbol of... A formidable symbol of power found across the far reaches of Karn. Granted skills, out fox. Like a wily snow fox, disengage away from combat in a flash of frost that leaves your enemies chilled. 80 energy cost, 4 second skill recharge, 5 meter radius, 13 meter range. Wait, is this one of the new things from the new expansion? Cool. This is a damn. Uh, basically, it's a thing you apply to metals, it's a movement ability. Um, 30 meter range. Uh. 3,822 frost burn damage over 3 seconds, freeze target for 3, 40% uh, slow target for 3 seconds. You know something, a, a, a YouTube channel I miss, Yahtzee Crochers. He used to do Let's Drown Out with um, one of his buddies, Gabriel. And uh, it was fun, I remember growing up with those. Well, maybe not quite so growing up with them, but I would say with Tavern Cast. But I was younger and I have a certain level of nostalgia for it. So, yeah, it's just thinking back on it. I want to go watch one of those ep one of their episodes of it going to sleep today. Might get to do um, some Titan Quest later. It depends on how today goes, if something going on today, and it may or may not get in the way. 
so many bones. Like, my god. It's reminding me of the Path of Honor from, um... You know, Outland. Just all those bones. Which was kind of overdone, gonna be honest with you. Like, I'm just thinking, like, okay, there's nowhere near that many Draenei. <laughs> you know, it's you've just, like, depopulated, you know, two Draenors for that one road. You brought me the obsidian. I can sense it. Um... A shard of obsidian pulses with the, the, sorry, this shard of obsidian pulses with dark power. Yes, here it is. Thank you. What a fine sample. It absolutely reeks of the corrupting powers of the void. I'll have to handle this one carefully. But while we were gone, another matter of some import has come to my attention. Eighteen thousand XP, two thousand two hundred and fifty outcast reputation, but I lost two hundred and fifty whack legion rep. I also got the Inferno relic. Sadly it's something I already have. And, it, and that is? I've uncovered the location of one of our enemies, Archivist Talon. He is a powerful material that was instrumental in the initial attacks on Ur Urlan. He is personally checking on activities in Port Valberry, a reclusive city that prided itself on its commerce and booming trade with the capital. Uh, this also made it a prime target for the material's initial incursion into human society. Before the Grimdorn even struck, Valberry was already doomed. As lo so long as Talon lives, humanity will never be free of material influence. Uh, this is an opportunity that cannot be squandered. Travel to the conflagration northeast of Homestead, and seek out the ethereal rift. It will take you to Valberry, track down Talion, and bring me back his head. No time for questions. Go. How do you know all this? Have I given you reason to doubt me before? I have great sight into the ethereals, but the opportunity will be squandered if we do not act now. Talon will move on, and then we come lost to me. I know what I ask you is dangerous, but I have confidence in your abilities. Bring me back his head, and we'll show all gain from it. Very well. Not quite here yet, and this will be beautiful. Actually, no, wait, doesn't. This is the stuff I was thinking of. Yeah, this will be nice. No anti chaos resistance, but still, still, it's good shite. Mm, hold on to that. Actually, I should hold on to this. Might be able to re-roll it in something else, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the re-rolls count within a set, or can be brought into another set. Yeah, no, I think I'm happy without this. Then again. Hmm. You know, it's... Yeah, we'll stick with what we have for the time being. Hmm, it's not bad. to that. 
boost bone harvest, but I do not care. Scorcher's Archive. Flame Surge. It's a demolition. It's tang true and true.